Thank you, Minister. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Is the country well equipped you know, to fight uh, coronavirus if it was to arrive? I have to say, yes, we are uh, ready. We've always been conscious of uh, having outbreaks, not necessarily for coronavirus. And we have public health teams in place. And only last month we were doing a, an Ebola simulation, just in case there was Ebola in Zimbabwe, what is it that we would do? So all the teams, all our forces that came from the whole country, you know, and we all went out and came up with a very good uh, exercise, you know. So everybody is ready and well equipped, you know, and, uh, for this coronavirus. And at the same time, well equipped in terms of monitoring and controlling infection at our borders, right? At the airports, initially, and at the uh, ground ports. Now, recently, I visited, besides uh, Robert Mugabe, I also visited uh, Victoria Falls. You know, so we, we have assessed you know, and made sure that you know, what is available there is adequate for us to be able to screen. We have thermal detectors you know, for the purpose of screening. You know, we're checking on temperatures, checking on fevers, you know, which is one of the major symptoms. And you know, also, that equipment is available. I might as well answer the question you know, from uh, the second question, whether we have more equipment. Yes, you know, we have, luckily enough, uh, been approached by Mimosa, and Mimosa have decided to donate equipment for all our um, airports, you know, thermal detectors, you know, for all our airports, which is uh, highly appreciated. You know, so we, right now as we speak, they went with one of our environmental health officers, in fact, they are there with the director in South Africa, where they are shopping for all this equipment, and they are going to come back, you know, probably tomorrow, and that the new equipment will be put, you know, at the airports. You know, where we already have equipment, but this is now the latest in the technology, in the, you know, the thermal detection, you know, so that we don't miss any case at all. And so we are appreciating what they are doing. You know, and at the same time, um, we, we realize that uh, our preparedness in as, is in as far as being able to follow up all the cases that arrive at our ports of entry you know, and be able to make sure that uh, on a daily basis, for at least 21 days, we have to follow them up. You know, whether they are going to Chinoy or going to Bulawayo, wherever they are, we have environmental health officers you know, who will be able to follow them up, and that is the job that they are doing on a continuous basis. So there is standard information which is collected at airports. And before the visitors even land, we know from the manifest where they are coming from. You know, so as they come down, we know that at seat number 14A, seat number 16B, there was this person who was coming from this particular area. So they immediately are given forms and they have to complete the forms and be able to indicate exactly where they will be during their uh, duration, if they are visitors, or if they are returning, where they will be working and, and so forth, so that we can be able to follow up. Preparedness in terms of isolation units, uh, Victoria Falls is fantastic. You know, the, the, the airport there is fantastic, you know, because it's still new, I suppose. They've got a fantastic isolation unit and a quarantine unit, you know, so the client, if the client is found to have a temperature, they have to be quarantined, you know, and then they're examined by our doctors and if they feel that they must be isolated, then they are admitted, then they are taken to an isolation, isolation unit. I'm highly complimenting Victoria Falls because that is where we get most of our visitors.
that's coming through as tourists, you know, and uh, quite a lot of them have been coming to, from China as well. You know, so we are very happy that that area where we are getting more of the foreign visitors coming through is well supported. You know, so we, we, are, we are happy with that. We have trained our public health staff, as I indicated, and we continue doing so. And uh, this is now cascading to all our institutions. You know, we are in touch, you know, with the associations, medical associations, and encouraging them to conduct, you know, training, you know, for their, their for the workers, you know, for, for the health workers. You know, we are calling for workshops and uh, just making everybody fully aware of this uh, coronavirus, you know, where it is coming from, how long it has been in existence, you know, and the symptoms and, and all that. So the cure, huh? you know, so all that, you know, we, we are looking at that. There is no vaccine at the moment you know, for, for coronavirus, you know, but there are some treatments uh, like antiretrovirals. You know, which have been used with some success, you know, level of success. You know, that is what the information which is coming out of the World Health Organization uh, so indicates, and also coming out of China. Uh, Antiretrovirals are being used. Um, the issue regarding testing is one of the issues you know, of concern. You know, whether we'll be able, if we had a case, whether we'll be able to test immediately. We are finalizing that arrangement. We have the equipment in our laboratories, but they did not have the relevant test kits specifically for this uh, 2019 novel coronavirus. There are other coronaviruses, but this one is specifically uh, the novel, uh, 2019 novel coronavirus. So there are kits which have been developed in China and we are in the process of uh, acquiring those. You know, they should be here any time now. We are working together with the Chinese Embassy in the sourcing of those kits. Um, we also want to our population to play a major role. So we are starting with awareness programs. You know, we've been working on our advertising material. You know, we want to be able to sell the information with regards to coronavirus to the whole population. We're working with ZTV so that they can flight, you know, information, awareness information. You know, we realize this has just happened, so everybody is now geared towards working towards those awareness materials. So those are being finalized. I'm sure we'll be seeing some starting maybe tonight or tomorrow. We have. Uh, you know, messages, you know, working together with uh, the um, platforms like internet, uh, I mean like Econet, uh, Net1, uh, Telesel, and sending messages through. It's a repeat of um, the HIV AIDS scenario, really. So that knowledge is there, and we're just uh, um, synchronizing it so that it becomes specifically for for coronavirus. Um, Madam Chair, I would like to also request, I would like also to request the public to desist from giving false information you know, on the social media. We've seen a lot of false information you know, coming through the social media. Some people saying that things are not well at the airports and things like that. That is totally false information. You know, we have uh, very good systems for screening and for follow-up, you know, so please um, don't listen to those who want to cause uh, panic, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, to the, to the nation. You know, let's not panic because of such messages. You know, we've got the opportunity to confirm, you know, with the various uh, institutions, health institutions, they will be able to give you the correct information, not what is now coming through the media, which is false. We've also taken advantages of uh, requesting 
or rather, um, we've requested that you know people who are you know who want to travel to the affected areas they should defer their visits. You know, it's really very necessary that uh, people don't go and uh, get the virus and then come back here with the virus. You know, so we would like to ask everybody in Zimbabwe, you know, you don't necessarily have to, you don't necessarily have to immediately go to the affected areas because you end up with a situation which you can't control. You know, at the same time, we're also saying we we're very happy. We've gotten information you know, from some of the embassies of the countries which are affected, and they've advised us that you know, they're actually sending out word not to come to Zimbabwe, you know, uh, so this, which is very good. You know, so we are very happy with that, uh, that approach you know, by the embassies you know, who have advised their uh, countries, fellow men, not to travel to Zimbabwe, even for some people from the affected countries who were living in Zimbabwe, they might have gone to uh, their, back to their countries you know, for the uh, Christmas holiday break. You know, they are being advised to stay there until the situation is stabilized. So that's the situation, Madam Chair. Oh.